Alright, hello everyone. I'm back. And this is a video on Leo. And it's all about Leo Rashi, <clears throat> the sign of the sun. And this is part of the beginner series on the zodiac for people who aren't, um, who are just trying to get a feel for the signs of the zodiac. Okay, so let's look at what Parashara says of Leo. Um, if you read the, here I'll pull the PDF for you guys on, on the screen here. Um, Leo is described by Brihat, in Brihat Prashra Horashastra, uh, chapter 412, it is described. Um, this is translated uh, by Ernst Wilhelm, and this is a, the best translation I've found because, again, uh, normally the Brihat Prashra Horashastra, a lot of people don't know that, but it was translated from uh, Sanskrit into Hindi and not even amazingly, and then from Hindi into English. So two skips two generations, it just gets too distorted. Um, so this is mo most specifically what it means. Uh, Simha is the the name of lion uh, that it's given, and that's the common, the most common name for Leo that we hear. Uh, but really, it's not just about a lion; it can rule any wild cat, and it actually might be a tiger. It might almost be more appropriate, especially since we're doing Indian Vedic astrology, and lions weren't really around in India as much as tigers were. And um, Leo rules jungles and forests, and that's where tigers dwell. And lions are actually animals more of the plains. And so this, actually, the lion quality may be a Western, um, a, a hint at some of the Western influence um, and connection between different traditions. Anyways, Simha means lion. So yeah, this is the sign of the lion. He says, the lion, ruled by the sun, is sattva, four-footed, a kshatriya, living in woods, front rising, large limbed, pale, eastern and vigorous during the day. So that is your, that's basically it. That's your description of Leo. So if you think about it, um, all right, we already know it's a lion. We already know it's ruled by the sun and we know it's sattvic. Um, the sun is a planet of sattva guna. So it's based on fulfilling its inspirations. It's uh, noble. It's the sun. You know, it's our higher self. The sun is really like our higher self. And the condition of your sun in your chart really kind of shows how well or how not connected or how well connected you are to your higher self. Um, so Leo is a sign that needs to work off its inspirations because it's sattvic um, and maintain that sense of purity and inner purity with one's ideals. Um, it's a Kshatriya, so it's a warrior planet, same as calling it a fire sign, really. It's the same idea, and I've talked about that already. The Kshatriyas, the warriors, are the planets, the signs, the energies that deal with a soul who's developing a moral compass of knowing right from wrong uh, and, and doing the right thing, which is scary and it actually requires a lot of willpower, which people don't realize. Just going with the, the flow, going with the trends of society, uh, doesn't really isn't as meritable in Vedic philosophy as doing what you know to be right against against everything else going on in the world. Um, no matter what the world says, doing your what you know to be right is really in many ways the heart of Hinduism. I mean, Krishna said to Arjuna, "You have a right to actions only, not the results. Leave the results to me, to God. Just do what you know to be right." You know, and he said also to do your dharma poorly is better than to do another person dharma perfectly. So again, doing what you think is right is more important even if you do it poorly. Um, living in the woods. So yeah, it's Leo is the sign of the woods and the forests and jungles. Capricorn will also do a little bit with jungles. We'll touch on that when we get there. But Leo is the primary sign of jungles and the wildcat, uh, any wild beasts of prey the king, the apex predator, this is kind of all connected to the sign Leo. But re do remember that it can be any wild beast of prey. So even like if a wild bear attacks someone, you might see stuff going on in the chart with like afflictions in Leo. And let's also remember that when Rahu uh, was in the tropical zodiac uh, in Leo, not sidereal, was when we had all those issues with um, that that lion guy who got uh, killed by a lion and he was poaching and all this stuff. But that's neither here nor there. Um, so living in woods, people who li like to live in the woods, there's also a little bit of symbolism here too because if you think about these environments that each planet chooses and, and rules over, 
Aries is another fire sign, but Aries rules the mountains and rocky ground and these like infertile barren areas. And he uses his willpower and just makes it work. But the Leo is actually a little different. It's going to a place where there is fertility. You're in the woods. There's probably a stream nearby. There's trees. There's sun. Uh, so really, it just takes work. It takes like the solar cutting and, enge and engineering and crafting and creating a little kingdom in there. You build a log cabin. You build a garden. You clear out trees. You cut down the trees. You create a garden, all this stuff. So Leo's the type of person who can do that. So his, uh, this also kind of symbolizes like approaching things that are kind of more realistically approachable and kind of a, more just a basic, the way normal productivity goes is more like Leo and the sun. And Aries is more of the, the lone hero, you know what I mean? Or the person who sort of like isn't, what he's doing doesn't even seem fertile or it doesn't even seem like it makes as much sense as going to the woods, clearing out a forest like that. Okay, well, if you just work hard, that'll work. The Aries is, um, it doesn't even almost seem like it will work, but he's just going to somehow will, him, will his way through it and through the grace of God it will work. Um, so there's a little bit of a difference there. I hope that I'm doing a good job of uh, delineating that idea. Um, I might be able to think of a better way to explain it later. Um, and Leo's front rising, but again, we don't. no one really knows exactly what that means, if you ask me. Um, so I like when we don't know something, it's a good idea to just leave a blank space in your mind for it and not try to make yourself understand it or fill it with fake stuff just to compensate for that. So I just don't know what to say about that. Large limbed. That is really interesting. Leo is one of the largest bodied signs there is. Aries, Capricorn, and Leo are the signs that make a person really bigger bodied. I'll show that in an example. Leo is pale. I also noticed that Leos have dark hair, like dark brown or black hair but they will be paler and especially um, like white European Leos will be a much more of a fair skin quality even compared to their same people in the same family as them like look at how dark skinned I am my brother is a Leo rising and he's so fair he's like pink and ruddy you know like Leo can actually get that pinkish uh, kind of reddish complexion too um, and yeah it's Eastern sign and it's vigorous during the day so that is basically, um, you know, that's Prosher's description of Leo. Um, Leo is really the typical sign of the alpha male, you know, and he also describes the sun as being square in other places and the moon as being um, round. Now, I've done other videos on the sun, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. So I think that's enough. Um, sun is the planet of the body, so Leo represents your kingdom and your sort of body. And it's a very territorial sign, which is also implied with the wild beasts of tra prey idea. So um, Leo is kind of about like carving out your territory and really whatever place is your place. If you're Leo, you need to learn to act from that place with, with dignity and responsibility, no matter if it's a high or low place. Um, okay, now let's pull up some examples. Okay, so first Leo example will be a woman because I actually found a bunch of other uh, men examples and I'm going to show like kind of like the whole like body, like building up of the larger body sort of thing. So I want to start with a woman example though, just to make it seem like it's not just about guys here. Um, and this is Amelia Earhart. Uh, <clears throat> first female pilot to uh, fly across the Atlantic Ocean and she set all these other records. So I don't actually remember all the other records she set. And um, I haven't, I don't know a ton about her life. She's just an amazing person. And she, being a, a woman at that time and just deciding to do that, you know you had to have a really strong son, right? To have that inspiration, I'm just going to go for it. Like, I'm going to follow my inspiration no matter what. You know what I mean? And so that, uh, that's a Leo quality. And so she, and she also, you know, became a king or a queen or, you know, a, in her own right, became created a dynasty and created kind of a kingdom and then created organizations for female pilots and paved the way for for women to be able to you know do aviation as well and we can also and so sun and leo so you you can see that obviously in her life what's also neat is that it's in the fourth house of vehicles um it's on the fifth cusp of doing what you believe in you know what i mean in your past life karma and your dharma and following your heart and also K2 in the fifth house people don't really listen to what other people tell them. So in this way, it was maybe good because 
certainly men and everyone was telling her not to do what she wanted to do probably. And we can see that because the sun, when the sun is with Rahu or Ketu and any other planet, it shames that planet. So the sun's actually shaming Mercury in this chart. I can't go into that too much, but we can basically just understand that authorities, the sun or males, patriarchal figures would shame or belittle her, her desires her or her mercury her curiosity her what she wants to do and what she believes in and or like what she wants to you know what she's interested in what she talks about her requests her you know um thoughts and everything and mercury also rules <clears throat> two male planets here um and they're in the sixth house showing some friction there and they're both starved um showing that the men weren't really conscious enough to see um how to treat her in a more equal way <clears throat> and Saturn the seventh is also kind of tough for that so uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on her chart though but you, I just want you to see the Leo quality um, in her life now uh, this would be like I guess more of your stereotypical alpha male this is the chart of Tom Brady um, and he's like a star quarterback football player type guy and I don't watch football, so I don't know much about it. But he has Sun Leo. He actually has Sun Starving Saturn, though. So that kind of shows the probably a ton of pressure from his father as a kid. Like he was, he maybe isn't even very happy. Like, uh, no, I shouldn't say that. Um, well, we could say that he has a lot of masculine, masculinity issues and authority issues and might be compensating for a lot of things. Um, but I don't know much about his life, so I can't say. He seems fine um, from, you know, I don't, I don't know anything about him, really. But I just know that he's a, one of these star athletes. He's considered to be very attractive, like ideal solar alpha male figure and all that. Um, but that Saturn in, in uh, Leo is, is definitely speaking to some more hidden complexes beneath the surface, let's say. Um, now we have the chart of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger, bodybuilder, um, also a, a governor, a leader, a politician, a king. You see, he also has Sun Saturn. And so that's kind of what's funny is that if you're going to be a bodybuilder or one of these star athletes, it's like, what are you, what is wrong with you that drives you to do that? Because people don't realize these famous people are like not really happy. They're just driven. They're so, they're these freaks that are just driven to accomplish a thing. That's really what a lot of famous people are. When you look at their chart, you see this. And a lot, sadly, a lot of times once they accomplish that thing, they're like, I'm still not happy. What? And then they turn to spirituality or go get readings from astrologers and counseling. But um, Arnold's actually a pretty reasonable guy, a pretty sound guy. Um, might be that Jupiter in the fifth house and other things going on. Um, but his, his, uh, he's a bodybuilder. You know what I mean? So the sun, obviously. And then that Saturn shows those complexes, which he wants to go harder you know, and that's how you have to be if you're going to be a bodybuilder. He's like, no, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I'm not weak. I'm not weak. Because Saturn and Sun uh, conjunct, the, one will have issues with their weakness, so they'll be always trying to be stronger, you see, to like compensate for this inner feeling of Saturn dragging them down, making them feel lack. Anywho, um, this is the chart of Terry Crews, funny actor. Oh, sorry. I get a phone call. Okay, and so... This guy, Terry Crews, he's been on, um, he's been an actor. He's been on the show Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Um, and, but he's, uh, he's played like football players and big ripped athletes. And we can see again that he has the son in Leo. So, you know, having a big, strong body is really highly indicated for him. But I don't know a ton of other things about him. So I'm going to, you know, just move on from that. But again, this is how we can see it. The Leo, it makes, literally makes one's body bigger, you know? So there's another bodybuilder type figure who's in the public eye and has a Leo son. And then here's another one. Um, many people know this guy, Joe Rogan. He's this uh, famous guy with the podcast. And he was a mixed martial artist guy. He was also the guy from Fear Factor. Um, and he's all about martial arts and bodybuilding and he's kind of one of those stereotypical um alpha male type of figures and we see that he also has sun in leo and he also has jupiter and mercury there with the sun and jupiter actually is strengthening the sun even more there but i don't know if his birth time is correct so again i can't say too much about 
that or the rest of the chart. But the main point I wanted to make was that the sun has a strong influence over your physique, your body, um, and how, how one behaves. All right, take care, you guys.